Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man who's back inside the Bellator cage here. Bellator 277, Linton, as always, man. Appreciate the time. Uh, I was uh, your most recent Instagram post uh, as we're, we're doing this conversation. Uh, you yeah. wrote, loving what you do and doing what you love just hit that soul differently people which made me think about where does does the love for martial arts and the love for the fight game happen at the same time were they t- at two different times in your life um i'm gonna say it all happened at once um soon as i i joined the gym i was like on oh, my days i can do this like i never thought so watching it i never wanted to do it that's that's what the crazy thing was and then I went to the gym, started training, and I was like, I love this. And then when I went into the to had my first fight, I was like, I just won, and I get paid for this. This is crazy. And it really is like, damn, this is something I really love to do now. And I can fight as well and get paid. It just it just sort of fell into place. And, and, and it just came to me the other day. I thought, I'm actually doing something that I love and do what you love. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well. yeah i think that's that's all we want but the one of the things i noticed is one of the hashtags i saw you put was hashtag good vibes only which kind of made me think about like a, a fire mindset of, of you know the, yeah. the, the cliche we hear in athletics is block out the noise exactly it, it, has that taken time for you though of course i i'm not gonna lie of course back in the day i used to read all comments and stuff <laughs> and be like oh it's they said I'm not good, or they said this, but it's it's comments. And if people aren't talking about you, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> you're exactly you right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if no one's saying nothing, then it's like, oh, well, no one's actually talking about. No, one, no one's watching me. No one cares. You know. So those those negative and all, even the good, it all helps. And kind of going back where you talked about, you know, loving what you do and, and thinking about the evolution of your career, of course, you know, yeah. for, for people who've been watching Bellator for a long time, they, they remember the, the 205 pound version of Lint Vassell. And now yeah. we've got the heavyweight yeah. version ha- has the, the mindset changed in a way of, because of heavyweight, obviously you're not having to worry about the weight cut. Yeah. Oh, seriously. So much. When I was like heavyweight, I used to think I had to be the biggest in my weight class, you know, to have that advantage. But what it did to me, it took away my, my cardio. I was, I was like, my mindset wasn't right because of cut all that weight. So I'm actually killing myself before the actual fight. So when it, when it came to the fight and, and I didn't win and stuff, I started doubting myself. Like, maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. Mm-hmm. You know, and then obviously, then, then I went on a, a good win win ratio. Um, so then obviously it changed, but it just got harder and harder to cut weight. You know, so I was like, two two forty Linton heavyweight Linton needs to <laughs> needs to come out, and it's definitely the best thing I've ever done. It, it really it, is. It makes me think about um, you know because the UFC main event the week a uh, week previous was Curtis Blades and Chris yeah. Dawkins, and yes. after the fight came out. Curtis Blades, he says, like, look, I'm not trying to downgrade my opponent, but just because yeah. you weigh 240 pounds doesn't mean you're a heavyweight. When you yeah. made that transition to the Bellator heavyweight division, was that part of it sitting there going, that first fight and going, okay, I got to kind of see how, I, how I, I feel against these guys? Yeah, and again, I made, I made a mistake um, in my first heavyweight fight. So I walk around about 240, so I just thought, I'm heavyweight. I can eat what I want. <laughs> and again, it was a bit bit of me being dumb and naive. So I was eating what I like and obviously just blowing up and not, not thinking of it. And I weighed um, 247. So going from 205 fighting and then my normal weight was about 230. And I just blow, sorry, 235. So I just blown up all that weight and had a fight. I looked good for the first round and a bit, uh-huh. but then I slowly, 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 slowly got exhausted. And hey, <laughs> feeling like that, you feel like you're helpless. Like I was on my back and I knew what to do. I could hear my coaches uh-huh. screaming, reverse this, couldn't do nothing. 
So I said to myself, never again am I doing that. So I went back, spoke to my strength conditioning coach, Corey Peacock, and he said, what, what happened? What did I do wrong, you think? And he's like, well, one of the things was you blew up to 247 from going from, you know, 235, 238, you know, straight to that. It's, you got, you went from here straight to there. Um, so it was like, you know what? Where do you feel good at? And I said, I walk around about 238, so 240. Mm-hmm. Why don't we, we, we keep it like an even even number? And and look at my record now. You know, three three big wins, two finishes, and I and was out wrestled a wrestler. <laughs> so it show it shows you, you know, two forty Linton, you know, um, ready for that title belt, ready for that title. You know, and speaking about that matchup against Fortune, kind of made me wonder because of the fact that you and Tim, your opponent here, have both fought him. Yeah. Was part of this camp a comparison and contrast of how you fought him as opposed to how Tim fought him? Um, not so much. You know, I don't really worry about that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I just do me and get myself ready because I feel like if I start worrying about how Tim got ready or vice mm-hmm. versa, I'm thinking too much. Getting ready for a fight is hard enough, you know. Um, so, yeah, I try not to think of it like that. I just train the way I'm going to train and how I'm going to handle, you know, deal with, with Tim, you know. Um, and I feel like when I, when I do that and just focus on that opponent rather than other things outside, I, I do well and I, and I handle my business. Is the mental side preparing for a fight harder than the physical side? Yes, it, it really is. Because, again, we're human. Of course we doubt ourselves, mm-hmm, yeah. you know. You get, get a bit older. Have I really got it? You get injured. Ooh, to feel I can still fight. You might, you might get, might get, uh, have a bad round. Oh, maybe I'm not ready. But you know, these are all, all part of the game, and I really wouldn't change it. You know, it, um, it actually does make you better. Is there something about Tim's abilities that you think people have underestimated about him? Of course, is 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 a strong, big dude, man. He hits hard. He's got a good, great ground game. You know, I mean, he's got a good gas tank as well. You know what I'm saying? So um, he went on the tear. You know, I feel like if he would have beat Tyrell, he would have probably gone fight, fight for the belt as well. Um, so, yeah, people do underestimate him, but you, you shouldn't because, again, he's, he's still in the top five. And I underestimate him one, one bit, you know. He is in that top five and he's in my way. If I underestimate him, then I've done myself injustice. I know in our past conversations, you know, the one thing you have said, you and check will never fight. That's something that yeah. you're not wanting to do. He's got a title fight coming up. I think a lot of people look at you in this spot and say, you're potentially fighting for the title next. I know. But I what know. happens if check wins? That's a conversation we have to speak to. We're going to have to talk, haven't we? Because I want to be champion of us. He wants to be champ. So obviously we have to have that conversation, you know. Um, again, he is, a, he is a good friend and the same as Steve Murray, you know. But that obviously that's something we have to talk about, you know. I mean, Czech is, you know, Czech's fight late in, late in his career. You know, we usually don't see fighters that late. Can you see yeah. yourself at that age still competing? I like to say no. <laughs> I like to say no. Only, bec- only because I'm not that, that age yet. You know, um, I've had a good... Well, I've had a great career, should I say, you know, so I'd like to think, you know, I don't want to put a, a time limit on it, but at some point it'd be nice to be like, you know, I, I did it. I became world champ, you know, I defended it, you know, I've, I've done what I wanted to do. Now it's time to enjoy, enjoy myself and relax, relax in the Caribbean or something. Now, now let's say, you know, your next fight is for the title. It would be the ideal scenario for it to be somewhere in the UK. I would love that. I, that would be ideal to fight in the UK and become a world champion in front of my peoples. You, you couldn't write it any better. You know. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, again, that, that's like a story tale kind of thing, isn't it? You know. So yeah, if that if that happens, that would be that'd be set. Would there be a bucket list venue in the UK for you? Well, I'd love to fight. Um, what's it called? The Royal Albert Hall, but. It's not even, they don't even do, mm-hmm. they don't even do events there no more. So I guess it would have to be Wembley. 
Is, is there anything you, you know, obviously you're trained, you know, in South Florida, is there something about back home that you miss above all else? My peoples. <laughs> I hate the weather, but it, it really is my peoples, you know, and obviously that like, little thing that home comforts are like going down the shops and buying some fish and chips. <laughs> you know, you, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that here. Well, there's no fish and chip shops. <laughs> There, um, there's yeah, there's really, there's got to be at least one fish and chip British spot not, in Miami. It's not the same though. It's not. It's not the same. Doesn't matter. Even if they try, it's not. It's not UK. You can try. I've had the Caribbean food here as well. It's nothing like my mum's cooking. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's good, but it's nothing like my grandma's and my mum's. Um, so yeah, um, home comforts and obviously my people's. I, I, I miss them probably the most. All right, we'll leave on this. What's if uh, what? What's the number one mom and grandma food item that you miss? Um, for my mom, it's a um, curry goat. Okay, and my grandma is a chow mein and chicken. All right. So my grandma's half Chinese, half Jamaican. So she goes cooks that. You know that the chow mein and then the Jamaican chicken. Oh, the combination, mate. <laughs> but does but does that, that you can see how happy I am? So. I can't wait to eat that. But the question is, could you could you in, uh, take in that food during a fight camp when you're you're trying to eat clean? No, <laughs> no, it's after that kind of stuff's after that's, celebration food. That's awesome, awesome, Lynn. That man, as always, uh, appreciate time. Of course, everyone can watch your Thank fight you. uh, live on Showtime Bellator two seventy seven. Uh, I, I know uh, f- uh, fighting for autism has been something that you've been behind as an ambassador. Is there anything yes. else you want to uh, let people know that you're involved with in right now? Um, other than again fighting for autism, um, I've got my my t-shirts coming out as well. So again, if you're a big Swarm fan or you're just joining in, um, go onto my social media, which is LD Vass. Um, sorry, LD Vass underscore the Swarm, and on my bio, you can um, log on there and actually um, get a t-shirt if if you like to support the cause. And also, I'm doing now better tour cameos also as well. So if you want a happy birthday, a get well, any anniversaries, hit me up and I'll wish you one of those special days for you. Awesome, man. I appreciate time and uh, look forward to seeing the fight, man. Respect.